Good morning to each one of you here today. I'm glad to be here today. I, I miss coming here like we used to, and I hope you feel the same way. I'm glad you're here, and I hope you're glad you're here because this is the large day, and I just wonder maybe he's got something special for us today. So I say welcome, and God bless you. We're going to start out right away with something to do with the shoe boxes. You saw how you did you see the big stack of them back there? And I appreciate them putting them together. <laughs> Every year I have to go through a learning experience how to put those boxes together, but someone is doing that for you already, and so we appreciate that. So right now, Marcy, show us the video. You know what goes great with a glass of milk? Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. Okay, let's be honest. Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox can go great with anything. It's so that other kids can learn about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, and it's also a great way to teach your own kids about giving. Teach your kids about giving. giving. Have a great day. Oh, and don't forget, make good choices. So basically, you get an empty box, which any box will work. Really? OK, not any box. Much better. OK, so now you have your empty box. Now you can pick the age range, and if you want it to be for a boy or a girl. OK, come on, please be a boy. Please be a boy? Well. Looks like we're going to be packing for a boy this year. First, you can choose a wow item, such as a soccer ball wow! or a stuffed animal. Mm. And you can choose other fun toys, too. Hygiene items oh, and school supplies. There are, of course, some items you cannot pack, like liquids, food, Items related to war, live animals, and don't even think about packing chocolate because it melts. No candy and no toothpaste. When your gift is finished, you can write a letter and include a photo. <laughs> When your box is done, you can make your shipping donation online through Follow Your Box. Simply print off your tracking label to see where the destination of your gift will be. And don't forget, it's important to pray for the child that is receiving this gift. Because packing a box is a simple way to share the gospel with kids all around the world. Maybe even in... Mib... In Africa. Now that your box is done, it's time to get moving. Transport your box to a nearby drop-off location near you. These will be open all across the U.S. on National Collection Week, the third week in November. Drop it off and voila, you pack the shoebox. Easy as one, two, three. used to be, I, I find them interesting. Each one's different every week. So thank you. You know what that's all about? And uh, you're preparing to fill your box. And remember, that box will wind up in some child's arms. That They probably never get something like that. So thank you for doing that. That is one of the bigger ministries of the church that we, we do here, and it's been We've been doing it for uh, how many years? Many years. And it's a blessing. I, I think the Lord honors us for that. So thank you for your participation in that. Uh, we'll be involved in that too, Pat and I. And we hope all of you will too. So, okay. Thank you. We're going to go to prayer time uh, right now. And I want to mention uh, some prayer needs. Uh, thank 
<clears throat> we want to pray for our pastor, the new pastor, whoever that is. Uh, we pray that it will be uh, someone that God wants here. That's my first thought. God, do you want them here? And they want to feel this is, what, in spite of whatever else is here, they want to be here to ministry. So we're praying for that. And uh, there are many people who are ill, and the COVID-19 is still upon us. We want to pray for that. The spiritual needs of whoever may have them and some of them that aren't here. And I ask you to pray for me today, too, my inflammations come back in my right eye and uh, if I do this you're very blurry out there I can see it a little better with the left eye but uh, uh, I, I'm under doctor's care and so he's going to take care of that and then I'm just want to thankful for the Lord watching over Jerry last week or the week before he had a, a near accident at home that could have been very serious but the Lord spared him and he's here today and I've thanked the Lord many times for watching over you during that scary time. <laughs> okay. All right. If you want to stand, you may. Uh, we're, we're, yes, okay. Pastor Doug, he's uh, better. I got the report, and you did too. He's better. He's not here. He still has his cough, uh, some of it. So we want to pray for him and possibly the trip they'll be taking to Florida a little later on. All right, Ruth is going to come and lead us in a, a prayer course. If you can stand, that'd be great. And then I'll pray the prayer. Pastor, also, um, if you could remember um, Chuck's friend, Eric Mortiman. Eric? Eric Borneman. Oh, oh, yeah, I know him. Mm -hmm. And he had COVID oh, and really? ended up having two strokes back to back. And um, it, was, it has been really affected by it. And then also um, another one of his friends that he was uh, worked with at the police department here in Glen Carbon, a young man. He's been here also. Um, um, okay, I forgot his name. Rick Turner. Rick Turner. Um, yeah, I know him too. Rick Turner, right. <laughs> well, yeah, about see. six weeks ago or so, he, was, he had a car accident and um, was complaining about his head hurting. So they, I guess they did some tests and found that he has stage four high-grade brain cancer and so didn't know it. He's about 51-ish, we think. Yeah. Um, and so, so far, they've given him one to two months. And so if you could remember Rick Turner and his family also, uh, we would appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Luella's got a prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Becky. Becky, I've been th she's been on my mind. I've been thinking about, I, in fact, I even talked to Linda about, uh, about your mom, about Myra. She's really been on my mind. Okay. And Rena Storm has a special itch issue we'll remember, too, yes. in her family. Yes. Okay. I'm going to try to lead the singing with this mask on. <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to go, but we'll, we'll try it. Let's sing, I worship you, almighty God. The front seats are open. You can always move my purse down onto the floor. Plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> 
plenty of room at the altars. If you'd like to come as we sing, please do so. We're going to sing, I worship you, almighty God. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace, that is what I long to do. I give you praise, for you are my Let us pray, and even if you feel prompted to come and pray, I said it as you feel, just feel you can do that. Let us pray together. Our Lord Jesus, first of all, we want you to come and be near each one of us. It doesn't matter who, just your presence makes so much of a difference, and we thank you for coming here today and being with every family and in this building and those that may be on the, the video and hear it on Facebook. We thank you for them, Lord, as well. But Lord, we ask your presence to go where they are, where we cannot be right now, but we, you can be there in our place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to say, Lord, we're praying for our new pastor, whoever that may be, Lord, will you breathe, bring them to us and may they feel the need that they want to minister here at Glenview. And then, Lord, there are so many, a myriad of people who are sick, illness, and a COVID-19, Lord. And we hear today that, as Chuck, uh, our Ruth had mentioned, uh, that Eric Borderman, who's a, a dear friend of his, and we're acquainted with him. He has that. And we pray, Lord, that the hand of God would reach down and touch Eric. We pray for Rick Turner, the former policeman that was here in Glen Carbon. And I know him well. Had a lot of conversations with him, Lord. And today we find that he has a dreaded illness of cancer. Would you touch him? And then, Lord, we pray for the spiritual needs. Those are always first and foremost as we pray, whether we're praying for our children, one another, wife, husband, our pastors, our spiritual needs. If spiritual needs were met, oh, Lord, what a difference it would be. I ask, Lord, as I've mentioned, that you continue to touch my eye and help it to get better. We don't know why it happens, but it does. And then, Lord, we mentioned Jerry Forte, that you spared him uh, a tragedy, and we're thankful, Lord, for that. And Rena has a special issue in her family, and uh, some know about it and whatever. We pray we remember that issue in prayer. It's a special one. Luella's sister, um, she fell. And Mara, she fell. Lord, these people are uh, in the elderly age. It's falling is not a good thing. And so, Lord, it's something that causes problems along that don't go away very quick. So wherever Mara is now and Luella's sister, uh, sister we it's not her sister, but Lowell's sister. We pray, Lord, you would touch them. So today, Lord, we are thankful. And every song Ruth brings to us, may it be one for someone here. 
Lord, whatever someone testifies or whatever I have to say through a message of preaching, maybe someone has a need for that. And we ask, Lord, that you would do that. So, Lord, look us over, nestle down right by us, and be very close to us throughout this day. These minutes and these, this hour or so we spend together could be the most important time of our week. Because, yes. Lord, we anticipate this day because this is your place. This is your church. We are you, your people. And we ask you, Lord, just to come and help and touch and bless and move upon everyone today. Bless the instruments as Chuck plays and as, as Nina helps us. And Lord, we, we're just a group working together as a team to the glory of God. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I worship you. Almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace, that is what I seated. since I've been here I've been watching you on Facebook but now I have a shield and now I ha and then I have this little insert in my mask and so we're hoping that all that works because these masks really affect my head <laughs> more so than all you know, anyway uh, if Nina would you come up first so October is pastor and wife appreciation month but also uh, it's an anniversary Pastor and Nina on Tuesday. They have their anniversary. How many years? Woohoo! 47. See, she went married at 10. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we just want to give you this for your anniversary. I think that's your thing. <laughs> yeah. And so. was the wrong card, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't ask me to do stuff. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Okay, open this one, and then we'll talk about pastor appreciation. What? We didn't mean any of that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean any of that, right? <laughs> we meant all of that <laughs> and more. Damn it, this is anniversary. Okay. On your special day, it was full of laughter and sweet memories and a time to celebrate. Thank you. 
can we each be a starter deck? Like can we pray together? Who are you? Both can be deck. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, wait, no, it's my turn. Never mind. Who wants to play? Who would like to play? Before you sit down though, I want to talk about past appreciation oh. life for doing Pastor Doug. And you know, uh, we do appreciate you guys came in and I mean you just fit right in. You were just one of us right off from the start and um, you've just been there and you've gone above and beyond, stepped into roles that uh, needed to be stepped in, you know, take it over, a Sunday school class that you took over and, and just, you know, many things they did and, and you know, it's just, um, we're just blessed to have you in our family and to have you stay in our family. So, thank you so much. Okay, next pastor and Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got it in my mind what I want to say now if I can remember because I was thinking about this and uh, you know we just love and appreciate you guys we know you retired how long ago were you supposed to have been retired uh, yeah and look where you're at <laughs> does God have a sense of humor or what <laughs> you know he stood up here I remember that day when we were all in tears saying he was going to retire, and hasn't happened yet, so not totally, <laughs> and, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for both of you and all you do, and I mean, I'm thankful because you raised me, <laughs> you know? I came here when I was about 28 years, yeah, oh yeah, blame him, it, it's all his fault, you wait till next week, <laughs> so, anyway, I just think about those years, I was 28 years old, now here I am, 62, and uh, you know, uh, I didn't know a thing, and you just guided me along. Both of you just kind of helped me through my way, and, and uh, you know, and I think you've done that for many of us, and we're just very, very grateful. We love you so much. So, here you go. Good speech. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With appreciation for you and all you do, as the two of you share. Oh, is this going to go past me? <laughs> as the two of you share in ministry, God is using you to shine his light and reflect his love. You are making a difference in ways you don't even realize. Asking God to bless you richly as you serve him. We love you and appreciate all that you do. Love your Glady Church family. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all suffering and all things may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9.8 We love you and appreciate you. It seems we're retired, but we're not tired, retired, and that's okay because God gets sweeter every day, and he's taking care of us. We love and appreciate you. It's been how many years now? I forgot already. That we retired, yeah. That we have retired, that we can go back to the memories of when we were here and the wonderful church services we had when the Holy Spirit came and blessed all of us and we appreciate those memories that we've got and we love and thank you. Rachel, it's good to see you back here. for us than anything, anyone, and uh, 
more a family than our family because we get to see you so often. And we thank you for your love for us. It goes both ways. And it always will. And we will love you even when we get to heaven. So thank you and God bless you. And thank you for coming. Well, I think we all can say amen to all those words, can't we? Pastor and Pat, Nina and Pastor Doug, they've never failed to be there when we've needed them and be there when we haven't needed them. They're just, they're just there. And uh, I, can't, uh, I can't think of, of Glenview without um, Pastor and Pat and and um, Pastor Doug and Nina haven't been with us as long, but, you know, you just, they become part of your family, you know, and, and uh, when they're not here or when you're not here, you miss them, you miss them. And uh, so we're just, we've been very blessed to have the pastors that we've had. And um, so continue to pray for uh, the new person that will take um the place here at uh, the behind the pulpit, and um, we want who God wants for us. Uh, it may not be who you think. I I, th I liked how Pastor Doug said that one time. It may not be who you think. May they may not look like what you think uh, you envision as our new pastor, but it's who God wants for us. That's the important part. So um, let's stand. Let's stand up and sing at Calvary. I'm not sure you can sit down and sing at Calvary. Years are spent in vanity and pride, caring that my Lord was crucified. Knowing that it was for me, he died on Calvary. No mercy, there was great and grace was free. But if there was not to cry to me, then my burdens are from liberty on Calvary. By God's word, at last my sin. Jesus.
constantly changing, constantly moving. So I've anchored in Jesus. Upon life's boundless ocean where mighty billows roll, I fix my hope in Jesus, blessed more of my soul. When trials fierce assail me as storms are gathering o'er, I rest upon His mercy and trust Him more. I thank God in Jesus, the storms of life I'll break. I thank God in Jesus, I fear no way, no way. But I thank God in Jesus, for He has power to save. I thank God in the rock, the whole day just. He keeps my soul from evil and gives me blessed peace. His voice has stilled the waters and the natural seas. My pilot and deliver to Him I often fight. For always when I need Him, He's at my side. I thank God in Jesus, the storms of life are brave. We all have those bad weeks, don't we, Becky? And I have to say, teaching in today's environment is stressful. And um, 
Yes, these masks, as you see, I abandoned this because I could not breathe to sing. And so, um, but to, to teach all day with one of these on, um, a lot of schools have been in remote or a hybrid kind of um, atmosphere. Um, myself, I've only had one, one week of hybrid teaching, and we've been there five days a week, um, you know, since school began. Uh, I wear a shield because I, ha I have a student that needs to be able to see my, my mouth and my face. And, um, and so I wear a shield instead of a mask. And um, so that makes it a little bit easier for me. But, um, but not being able to hug your kids. Every once in a while, you know, they forget and they come and give me a hug. And, and I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but uh, it is difficult, and we live in a difficult, stressful time right now where there seems to be this undercurrent of just stress that I think comes from the unknown and, and uh, um, people being unsure of themselves. But we can be sure in the solid rock that we have in Jesus. And on those days, Becky, when you just want people to just <laughs> stop talking to you, and you just want to sit. And those are the times maybe that the Lord is needing you to sit and hear what he has to say and soak up what he has for us. So after we've realized our sin, we've gotten that salvation, and we've gotten that solid foundation that we can build on uh, with Jesus, and then there is going to be a day when we are going to see him face to face. And we are going to walk the streets, and we are going to see the people that have gone on before. And we are going to rejoice at the feet of our Lord and Savior. And what a day that'll be. So let's sing that. What a day that will be after Chuck testifies. Oh, yeah. We have realized being at home and uh, seeing watching on YouTube and Facebook, when you all testify, it's, it's, it's awkward. We almost need you to have, we need that handheld mic or something because it's just dead air. So um, we need to think about that. It's, it's just this, this dead air um, out there. So I'm glad Chuck reminded me to give him a mic. I wanted to testify this morning. Rick Turner, we talked a little bit about him, uh, shocked me what COVID did to Eric Borneman. <clears throat> Just a huge man and uh, very healthy. And uh, he's, he, <laughs> he, he looks like it's put about five or six years on his life. It really does. But uh, when I got a hold of Rick, and, and I did it through text because he was being taken into Barnes at the time, <clears throat> and uh, so September the 7th was when he was diagnosed with this brain cancer, and so, uh, of course, the doctors are saying that he may not make it till Christmas, but anyway, I texted Rick, and I said, uh, buddy, how you doing, and he said, well, I'm still standing. And I said, well, I understand you're having some, some health issues. And, and he, said, um, he said, I'm blessed and highly favored. He said, Jesus is king. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to say those kind of words when you're sitting in your pew or you're mm -hmm. sitting at home and right. everything's going okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, your problems are relatively small. It's easy to say those things and to testify to that, but when you're 51 years old and you've got kids still at home and, and the doctor says you've got a month or two to live, it's a whole lot harder then, a lot harder then. You know, that's, that's putting faith to the test. And so uh, he said, I'm going to be healed. He said, it's no problem, and I believe that. He is going to be healed one way or the other. And his old clay body might be done. He may be worn out on him, but if so, then he'll go on to heaven and experience the ultimate healing. But 
you know, what a testimony. You know, it's, I pray that my life would be that way. I've had things pretty easy all my life, really. Uh, I haven't experienced too many terrible tragedies. The Lord's blessed us. We've, we've, he's favored us in that way, not, not because we deserve it. Uh, I don't know why, but, you know, there's, there's tough times that are coming, and, and we know that. Life is that way. Getting old isn't all that it's cracked up to be. And uh, I don't know who named it the golden years, but I think they got that wrong. I think the best part of life is when you're about three months old and you just scream and somebody takes care of you, you know, <laughs> carry you every place and everything else. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything. But, you know, there's probably tough times coming, and the Lord knows what lies ahead. I'm kind of glad I don't. But uh, I want to have that kind of a testimony, not just in the easy times, but when things get rough, to be able to say with stage four high-grade brain cancer that I'm blessed and highly favored. Now, that's a testimony. Praise his name. Amen. Amen.
and heaven. He is a wonderful Savior. Amen. And I, I encourage uh, shut the news off, shut that garbage off, and get some Christian music and have Pastor Barclay or Spot Ray or whatever. But let him. bring us his message. Let's sing what a day that'll be what really um, not quickly, but we'll sing it and then Pastor will Prepared to stay until two, uh, so just tell us what you want. Since you said that, Since two o'clock. That'll be any good. Two time o'clock. limit on a service today. If you there enjoy it, if you have to go, that's all right. But I'm not. I'm not in any hurry. Are you? Because I love this. <laughs> okay. But you know, I, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to come and speak. Uh, when Pat, uh, she's looking for speakers and. She gets to the bottom of the barrel. She usually finds me down there somewhere in the bottom of that barrel, I think. And uh, But next week, you're going to really be blessed. You're going to get a real treat. Right over here, there's a lady going to speak to us at this time next Sunday, and that's Karen. And uh, so that's going to be an enjoyable time. I hope you'll really turn out for her. So thank you, Karen, for doing that. You didn't, we didn't find you at the bottom of the barrel, though, to be okay. <laughs> okay, you, you were. So, well, today, uh, as I said, let's not put any time limits on this. Let's just, uh, this is a Lord's Day. And why do we have to be in and out in an hour? <laughs> 45 minutes or an hour and a half, you know. And, uh, so, anyway, I'm not going to keep you for just to be keeping you, but I'm going to uh, just want to 
speak to you today. I don't want to even call it preaching because this sermon, this message today is uh, one that you'll either love it or you won't like it. But the reason for this message is it's a biblical truth. And so this message today, as I said, it's going to be uh, one for you to make up your mind. Uh, I was prompted and led to bring this message uh, just reading through the Bible. And I got a new Bible. Pat bought me a new Bible the other day. It's really nice. I, I like it, but it only weighs about 15 pounds, so I can't carry it around. But it's got commentary in it and everything. And, and I, it just flipped over to this verse of Scripture. And this verse of Scripture uh, comes from Malachi 3.10. You probably know what it is already. But Malachi 3.10 reads like this, and I'm going to read it right over here. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Now that food, uh, that goes, Bible days, they, they brought food, and they brought necessities for the priest and the needs of the church and all of that. But, the strange thing, in the early days of, of the church before uh, furnaces and all of that, they had lanterns in the walls uh, hanging here and here. Here there'd be probably seven on that side, seven on this side. And those lanterns, people brought their own oil, kerosene or whatever you call that stuff, and they'd fill their lamp and turn it on so that there'd be light in the church. And if that one wasn't burning, that meant they weren't here. And that's the way it was way back when. And so people provided for the church, and so that food represents that word. And then we go on. Now, there is something here you, you must catch. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's an activity for us to do. We do that, number one, first, before anything else. And if, and if, that big word if, if we do that, let me read to you what you get. Wow, this is really something special. If I can get this page turned here. It says, now after I, he says, bring all the ties into the storehouse, okay, he says, now he says, and try me now in this. In other words, that activity of bringing your tithes, your money today, uh, all the offerings into the church. Put them in an offering. And he says, now try me, just try me, he says. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will not, now listen, this is so beautiful. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings, that's what he says, and pour out for you such a blessing. Just by doing that one thing of paying your tithe supporting the church. Isn't that amazing? And then he says this last sentence in number, verse number 10. It, it says, there, that there will not be room enough to receive it. In other words, we won't, there won't be room. There'll be so much. That is something that the Lord uh, says not his principle there if you do this I'll do that it's throughout the Bible if you do this I'll do that a myriad of things and we have all experienced that and I've learned that that we we got something to do for the Lord before he pours out or opens up the windows and and anoints us bless us whatever I mean what happened to Jerry uh, you know, that things happen. But you know what? The Lord protected him probably 
before because they bring their tithes into the storehouse. And that's a blessing. There, there are really flip sides to our giving because the Lord has what I call spiritual benefits that we can have. But we got to be obedient to God, do these things first, and in this particular for this sake of this sermon, it's bringing our resources into the Lord, the house, the place of the Lord. And so that's what this is about. Now, that's why I said, you're either going to like this or you're not going to like it. But, you know, I tell you, it's strange, you know. People that like a sermon in days of old, oh my, they used to, I said under some terrible, I say terrible, hard, you know, sermons that were just uh, skinning you. They just tear you apart, you know, for not doing something, just scold you. And I used to think, my, I didn't come here to be balled out, stepped on, smacked around. I come here to experience the presence of the Lord. And, and you know, and so people would, they, they would, the people that uh, like that because they're all paid up in her tithe, they say, sick them, buddy, sick them, go after them, you know. And I, I'm not here to do that. I'm not, I'm not no sick them today. I'm just going to, this is a teaching tool for your blessings. If you'll do this, you know, if you'll do this, I didn't say it. The Bible said what he's going to do for you. And so so many people struggle along financially, you know. Uh, Doris Kenny and Ken, uh, we were at their house for Celebrate Pat's birthday and Jerry's birthday, and she was telling me a story where they were they at a church that before they came back here to Glenview. And uh, they said uh, they had a couple in there that always just struggling and struggling with debt. And so Doris says, you know, if you let me, I'll set you up with the budget. And, and they consented to that. Uh, uh, we'll give you a budget, but you got to stick to it. But the number one item on this budget is pay your tithe first. That's what they did. These people did that. And within three years, they were totally out of debt. They, there was a discipline with it and paying their tithes and consistently they were blessed and they were out of debt. <laughs> There's nothing more better than being out of debt. Now, you probably wonder why. Why do I not hear a lot of sermons on money in a church and paying your tithe? Being a minister, I, I can tell you why we don't say much about it. Because we know, or we think we know, that people out there are saying, oh, you're just wanting more money. You just want more money. Either the, the checkbook is low or something else, you're just begging for more money. And, and so, you know, we refrain from getting involved with this. And so we don't. But we probably are missing the mark because this is just a teaching tool. It's in the Bible. And if we do not preach biblical things, we're not helping the congregation. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> it was during one of our church meetings when I was pastor here, we had a board meeting, and we were heavy into a discussion about a financial issue. And uh, so it went on and on. And, and finally someone spoke up on the board members and said something like this, and I quote now. They said, you know, you know, for us, we pay our tithes and offerings to the Glenview Church. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then another board, uh, board member piped up and said, no, no, we don't 
pay our tithes, we give our tithes to the Galilee Church of the Nazarene. We give them our tithes. So right here, right there, folks, follow me. Right here is a profound spiritual principle, a profound spiritual principle for all living Christians to adhere to. Actually, there is a difference between paying and giving. Paying and giving when it comes to the Lord. Now, paying is a mindset. Giving is a heart set. Okay? And as Christians, as you learn about the things of the Lord, you learn what giving is. It's a heart set. Now, the two words used by these two different board members, paying and giving, are nearly the same in activity. I mean, you're taking your money and you're placing it in somewhere else. And so, uh, but the spirit, the spiritual principle between giving and paying is vastly different far as the Lord is concerned. For you see, when you pay your tithe, it comes from mindset. If you think paying, it comes from a mindset. And when you give your tithe, it comes from the heart set. It's an attitude thing. Attitude is so important. So, this represents the big difference between paying something and giving something. It's a spiritual principle that we in try and we must instill within us. Now, I'm not looking at anybody. I'm not thinking about anybody. Uh, nothing like that. I'm just preaching the Word of God, okay? What it says in Malachi 3.10. And I'm trying to bring it to you the best I can. So, Remember, the mindset of paying and the heart set of giving is, it, it, there's a big difference. When the mindset principle of paying tied, then your mind relates to your bills, your credit card, your house payment, your car, and all, all that kind of stuff. Now, when the heart set comes into play, uh, the heart set uh, principle of giving, giving tithes and offerings, the heart and soul relates to Jesus our Lord because that's why we're doing it. That's why we want to do it. In, in the Bible, in John 14, 15, chapter 14, verse 15, boy, a profound verse. And these are the, this is the words of Jesus. I, I'm quoting Jesus here. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he says. That's Jesus saying that. Wow. And that's powerful. I think I want to listen to him. Christians do fairly well with most other aspects of Christian living. But sometimes when it comes to this tithing consistently issues, this often becomes a spiritual test of obedience. Are you with me yet? I've turned me out. Okay. I call it the litmus test for our love for Jesus. The litmus test for the love for Jesus. Now, what happens? The inner issues between paying and giving becomes inner conflict. I can't, you say, I can't afford it. I need it for something else. Or I want something else. It's a that's an inner conflict. Example, here, here's my thought here. Do I pay for a gift at Christmas for my wife, my kids, the anniversary? Or do I give a gift at Christmas for, to my wife and my kids and maybe who else? There's a difference. You understanding the difference? You are beginning to see the mindset and the heart set. When I 
give a gift for my wife at her birthday or at Christmas, it comes from way down here in my heart. I wish I could usually do more than what I've done. But if I did it with my mindset, I'd probably be real skimpy, you know. I, I would give her last year's card or something like that. I, I, know some, I knew a family that did that. They, they, they just recycle the card, and I thought, that was funny, but that's okay. If that, they like it, that's fine. You know, if love is the heart set, it becomes joyful, loving. It becomes an expression of love within. For the object of our affections, when we are following that verse of Scripture, is Jesus. He's the object of our affections before anything else. Before any, Remember, at the beginning, I, I said it's, you know, we are going to like this or we don't. I hope you, you're getting to like it. If you love this kind of, of preaching, it's like I said, <laughs> it's, a, it's sick, but I'm not going to do that, and I hope you don't feel that way. Again, this is a spiritual benefit, that verse of Scripture. A spiritual benefit. Wouldn't you? The benefit is open up the windows of heaven, God, and pour out on me. When I ask you when I'm sick, touch me. Touch my eyes. Touch my, my leg or, touch, or for my wife. That's, he's opening the windows of heaven. But when did it come? After I first was obedient to him. And that's why, <laughs> I don't know if my thinking is right, but why we... Why Pat and I, why we are so kiss consistent with paying our tithe is that I'm scared not to. I don't know about you, but maybe that's not a good reason, but that's what keeps us doing it before anything else. And the Lord is faithful. He has opened up some windows, and she can uh, attest to this too because it's so important. But you must first do the giving to get the benefit. I think you understand what I mean. Now, when you pay for something tangible, like a car, truck, house payment, coffee pot, lawnmowers, uh, uh, TV clothes, you know what? Tangible means you see it. You can feel it. You can see where it went from here to there from your checkbook to someone else's account at the, the business. That's one thing. That, that is a tangible thing. Now, here is sometimes the problem. When you give something not, N-O-T, not tangible, such as ties, offerings, faith promises, love offerings, need for others, whatever it may be, they are not tangible. You can't hold them. You can't see them. But here is something that changes when you do in your heart. It changes for, to the heart set mode. And these now, listen to me, it's right important here. This is when it changes from the mindset to the heart set, it becomes comes a spiritual value. Spiritual value. It's a spiritual value. Today, it's and that is all everything I'm saying is based on the words of Jesus. In John 14, 15, again, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ask me if I'm keeping the commandments. I can honestly say yes. So are you keeping the commandment? You know, I, I stand here preaching a, a message like this, or speaking a message like this. If I, I don't say this braggingly. I don't say it for any other reason, just for your, your benefit, that if I would preach, speak, a, on a message like this, and I wasn't paid up, then I, we would be hypocrites. We, I would feel I'm a hypocrite. 
because I'm telling you to do something, but if I'm not doing something, uh, I think that's hypocritical. And so that's why we are so afraid not to. We, now, here's a thought, and I, I'm just about to close. We have no choice in paying bills. You have no choice in your payments because if you don't, you know what happens. They will send you out those notices and then they'll come and get whatever you got. You didn't have a choice. Once you did that, you are committed to it. But we have a choice in giving to the Lord's work. We have a choice. You have a choice. God designed it that way, and that's the way he wants it. It's a sign of our obedience and our love for Jesus. If you love Jesus, you will do what he asks. It's a heart set, a spiritual principle that results in wonderful benefits. The Bible promises that. So, it's a thought. Now, that's why I'm saying these things. So I'm speaking these things today because this is a very important lesson from God's word that doesn't always be, get spoken. But I want you to know about the benefits, about his love, about his, uh, if you love me, keep my, you'll keep my commandment. That's what we, we are to do. And that's what we can do. And I find, you know, I can honestly say, over the years, we have benefited from doing this. We really have. And that's why every once in a while we say, why don't we just give a little more? <laughs> and that happened last time we were in, uh, taking pledges for the Easter offering, Thanksgiving offering or something. Why don't we give a little more? Because I heard some that, you know, you give a little more and the Lord will bless or something like that. And so we did. We increased it $25. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just saying that the next week we got $100. Came from nowhere. That's a pretty good benefit. I, that's like opening the windows of heaven. I paid, we paid $25 and got 100 back. I said, hey, maybe I should have given 50 <laughs> You know, isn't that a mindset? You know? No, no. And down through the ages, <clears throat> we have experienced God doing unusual, and I want to say crazy things, for us financially. Amen. And I, I believe it all goes back to this verse of Scripture. Put your money in the storehouse. He calls it tithe. Tithe is, you know, a tenth. You knew that, didn't you? And that's the way the old Jewish people started a new synagogue. They had to come up with ten families, and each family pays a tenth of their offerings of their income so they could pay the priest and that's the way they started a new church. That was their principle. That's how they did it. So, okay. I feel I'm out of time on this one. May the Lord bless you. May you listen to the principles, these wonderful things and may he bless us and bless you and if you're not doing this, do what Dor said to that young couple. Just try it. Try it. And if it doesn't work, then stop. <laughs> stop. Don't do it anymore. But in three years, they were totally out of debt and had other things and had a different car and you name it. But it, this is a spiritual principle that I want everyone to experience. And that's why I'm telling you this. May the Lord bless you. If you'd commit to the Lord, not to me, not to even Glenview Church, just give to where the message is coming from. 
and it comes usually from the church. God bless you. Thank you for listening, and may the Lord give you a good deal. I hope to see many more of you next week for Karen, and I hope we just, uh, we can have 50 now, am I right? With the new opening, we can have 50 in a church, so we're not quite there, so they tell me, so I hope there's at least 51, 52 to, to hear her and listen to Chuck and Ruth, and thank you, thank you. We, we'd, we'd be lost without you. I'd say that. Now, down through the years, you've been so good. Our Lord, I love you. Thank you for letting me speak what you wanted, told me to speak on, because it's going to be helpful. Not only here, but those watching on that camera back there that's going into their homes. May it, if it doesn't help someone here, may it help someone there. I love you. Go with us to our homes. Be with us in every way. Let us do something very Christian for you, Lord, this week. Amen. God bless you, and you may go.